Hello fellow fans of SLOs and thank you for tuning into this talk. SLOs are amazing. Implementing SLOs can transform how your teams build, ship and run software. It's so simple on the surface but the effects are incredible. It can be an absolute game changer. Having said that, simple does not mean easy. Implementing SLOs is really hard. It's a lot of work with loads of challenges and problems to solve on both sides, with both people and with technology. Uh, the main idea of this talk is once you've got some SLOs in place, start thinking about building margins of safety around them. And a great way to do it is with load testing and production. Load testing and production can help you protect those precious, precious SLOs. Let's rewind back for a bit of a story. Uh, back in 2019, I helped spin up a new SRE team at Condé Nast International. Uh, the system that we were working with was of decent scale and decent complexity. Uh, a very modern in-house stack but also plenty of complexity around third-party integrations and legacy requirements. The teams were using a very modern DevOps-based way of working, which meant frequent deploys to production and all the risk that that carries with it, which of course is the reason SRE exists as a discipline in the first place. Uh, a developer survey that the, team, the SRE team ran identified a couple of biggest pain points which became top priorities for the team to solve, namely on-call fatigue. Plus, lack of effective monitoring, as perceived by developers, uh, meaning that developers felt that they were completely overloaded by metrics from you know, across the stack, but it was really difficult to tie those back to user impact and user experience. And then finally, teams felt very strongly that there was more need for more clarity around alerting, uh, namely what makes for good alert, um, how to define one, um, who owns alerts for which services, and criteria for actually paging someone and potentially waking them up. And of course, the solution for all of these was, drum roll, SLOs. The key point I should mention here is that uh, SLOs, once you start looking at them, are like turtles. It's SLOs all the way down, starting from the top and going down into smaller and smaller components and services. So we, on purpose, started with top level SLOs uh, at the beginning, which are SLOs that are based on real user experience. And then we let that trickle down to larger system components and individual services over time. So a couple of quick examples of such top-level SLOs would be uh, time to first byte for server rendered pages, which go back to the user, or for example, an error rate, uh, which can be defined by the ratio of 500 to 200 that we're serving to users. And spoiler alert, it worked to treat. Uh, there are no more callouts based on symptoms that didn't really mean anything. There was always a clear connection to user impact. And we had a golden rule, which was that no SLO violation meant there was no page. So that meant there was no more pointless call outs for symptoms that just don't really matter and can wait until daytime. So the result of that was a huge drop in call outs and happier engineers. And this sort of thing is not unusual in orgs that implement SLO based alerting. Now, all of that was really hard work. It wasn't just smooth sailing and all rainbows and unicorns. We ran into loads of challenges, both technical and sociological. Um, other talks will no doubt cover aspects of this, but I'll just say that it was hard work, but it was very, very worth it. Which brings me back again to the main idea of this talk, which is that we've done all of this work. We sold SLOs to developers, to product, to XX, we onboarded development teams, we spent a lot of time defining SLOs, uh, we built some very non-trivial in-house software to improve the quality of our metrics um, on which we based those SLOs, uh, we've put SLO tracking in place, what now? As a team, as the SRE team, we wanted to go much further. Complex systems evolve and grow. And with that, you can ask the question of how do you help guide the evolution and growth of a complex system over time? If you have evolution, you have fitness functions. And in software, we can define our own fitness functions. So that's exactly what we did. We decided to use production load testing as a fitness function for all of our performance-related SLOs. Um, I first came across the idea of fitness functions in a book called Building Evolutionary Architectures. It's a very powerful idea, and I would definitely recommend reading the book if you want to learn more about the subject. Um, production load testing can be a very controversial subject. Uh, what I believe is that by running production load tests, we're bringing the pain forward. Yes, it carries some risks, but it's much better to burn some of the error budget now um, through our production load tests, 
versus gradually sliding towards some state where traffic spike can cause the system to completely fall out of a long-term SLO. And it also has relationship to a um, concept called antifragility, where we endure and adapt to small shocks continuously to stay immune to larger ones. And while our testing production, um, shift left is a big subject in testing. Um, it has its place, shift left is perfect for things like unit testing and um, end to end testing, in my opinion, of course. But I think that shift left for performance testing of a complex system is a complete lie. You need to load test in production. If you squint at this right, then of course load testing in production looks kind of like chaos testing or it can be seen as another kind of a chaos test. Um, and all of the arguments in favor of chaos testing work for production load testing and vice versa. So what did this look like in practice? We started very small. We started with a scheduled production load test just once a week, adding synthetic traffic to get to plus 25% above peak traffic uh, observed in the previous seven days. There was no manual tuning or pre-scaling of any kind before running the load test. And we started with testing endpoints which were most likely to affect our high level SLOs. We also had SLOs for the load test itself. Um, we didn't want to burn more than a certain percentage of the budget of a set of those um, high-level system SLOs. So that was quite simple. And we also had a, an objective uh, to be able to stop any running production load test in 30 seconds or less for safety reasons. And we had our first test running with artillery in just a couple of days. We started running those tests regularly. And then very, very quickly, amazing things started happening. Teams started asking us to be included in the production load test. And guess what? Our answer was, of course, yes, we'd love to, but you need to define SLOs for your stuff if you haven't already. So in this way, production load testing helped increase adoption of SLOs across the organization. We, of course, found bottlenecks and performance issues, but most of the time, we didn't find anything. And that felt really great. We knew that even though the system changed a lot, we still had that margin of safety built in. And that helped fulfill a major promise of implementing SLOs in the first place, which is that the help product teams balance feature work with reliability work. So it was wins all around. To reiterate, once you have some SLOs in place, uh, you should start thinking about building fitness functions to build buffers around those SLOs. The concept of fitness function is very powerful and production load testing is a great fitness function. You can start very small and then expand over time and your existing SLOs will guide you. Sky is really the limit. The important step is to just get started. Go SLO to go fast. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, I have a couple of links here which go into more detail of what the SRE team at Condé Nast got up to early on and also a much more detailed write-up on production load testing. Uh, any comments or questions, please hit me up on Twitter or drop me an email. Cheers.